there's a couple of interesting things about the sacrament of confirmation, and it has to do with the timing of the sacrament. Because now, at this time in the life of the church, we receive the sacrament of confirmation as teenagers during our high school years. And there's a very um, serious misconception sometimes with the young people who are receiving this sacrament because they think it's a graduation from church. And it's not. Actually, it's quite the opposite. It's not a graduation from church, but it's an opportunity to take on more responsibilities as adults in the church. If you remember in our conversation about baptism, we talked about how our parents professed their faith on our behalf because we were too young to do that. And then they promised to teach us about the faith, love of God, and love of neighbor. Now, having done all of that, when we come to the point where we're ready to receive the sacrament of confirmation, we are going to profess that faith for ourselves. We're going to say, yes, I believe. I believe all the things that I was taught about love of God, about love of neighbor, because we are becoming adults in the Catholic Church. And if you remember every single Sunday when you go to Mass, after the homily, is also the recitation of the creed. And that lists all of the things that we believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in his son, Jesus Christ. And all of the things that we teach and believe about the Catholic faith. So that's what we are assenting to, saying yes to, when we make our confirmation. Now, the minister of confirmation is the bishop. And it's very, very important because the bishop receives his power through the power of the Holy Spirit. And the bishop can be related all the way down through the ages to the very first apostles. So you know in our North region, we have Bishop O'Connell, who is our regional bishop. He was ordained by Cardinal O'Malley as bishop. And Cardinal O'Malley was ordained by another bishop. And all the way back, we can trace the ordination of each bishop through the centuries all the way to the apostles. And that's important because it was to the apostles in the upper room on the Feast of Pentecost that the Holy Spirit descended upon them and gave them the gifts of the Holy Spirit and the power that they needed to be responsible for the church. And so that's why the bishop is the minister of confirmation. There's very two very, very important parts in the whole confirmation ceremony. The first is the laying of the hands on the people to be confirmed, and that's when the bishop calls upon the Holy Spirit to give his grace and his power to all of these people who are going to be confirmed, and that's when they receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit. But the second, and this is the most important part of the confirmation ceremony, is the anointing with the sacred chrism. If you can remember back to our talk on baptism when I talked about the sacred chrism, I said that one of the things that it was used for is in the sacrament of confirmation that the bishop will seal the faith of the person being confirmed because they are professing that faith for themselves. For the very first time, their parents are no longer doing it for them. They are making that profession of faith themselves. And so the bishop will anoint them with the sacred chrism and say, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. And that's what the sacred chrism is used for in the confirmation ceremony. Whenever we have a celebration that involves the Holy Spirit, the color that we wear is red. And on the day of confirmation, the bishop will wear his red vestments to signify not only is this a solemn event, but it is also an event where the Holy Spirit is present. And so the color is red. Sometime later on, we're going to talk about the liturgical year and all of the feast days and all of the colors of the different vestments that we wear throughout the year. But just know that for now, the sacrament of confirmation, the bishop will wear a red vestment. 
couple of very important things about confirmation. First of all, in the future, as a, as a confirmed person, you then will be able to be a godparent at baptism. One of the requirements for being a godparent at baptism is to be 16 years old and to be confirmed, to have received the, conf the sacrament of confirmation. Okay, because you are no longer a child of the church, you are an adult. And as a confirmed adult, you will be able to sponsor a child for baptism. The same is true for confirmation. A confirmation godparent must himself or herself first be confirmed. And it's the same principle that applies uh, to being a godparent for baptism. The other uh, very exciting part, I think, about being confirmed and being uh, an adult in the church and taking on these new responsibilities, now you have an opportunity to function in the liturgy, particularly the Sunday Mass. You can be trained to become a lector and to read one of the readings at Sunday Mass. Or you could be trained to become a Eucharistic minister, an extraordinary minister of the Eucharist, and help to give out communion. And that's all part of the privileges you have as being a confirmed Catholic person in the Catholic faith. So those are the opportunities and the responsibilities. You have a responsibility always to declare your faith, to never shy in the face of anyone who tries to deter you from anything that has to do with the love of God, the love of neighbor, or the love of your church. So I hope this little snippet on confirmation helped you to understand a little bit about uh, what's going on and why we do it. And hopefully the next time we get together, I will complete the whole process of initiation by going through the sacrament of the Eucharist. So, for now, this is Deacon Ed saying goodbye and looking forward to seeing you once again in our next session.